Karina here, your Lucid Living Coach. How's everyone doing? It is the end of the week. It is Thursday, November 16th, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the new moon in Scorpio and Mercury retrogrades coming up again. I feel like it's been a while though, which is fine. I don't mind that. But, uh... It's time to get our thinking caps back on and um, think about everything that we want to reanalyze, rethink with newfound information. Uh, we are now in Mercury's shadow period. It will begin to retrograde. I'm not entirely prepared. Um, so December 3rd is Mercury retrograde in the sign of Sagittarius. Okay, so let's see. New moon in Scorpio. It is at 26 minutes and 19 seconds. So that's an eight and a one. New beginnings and then them together would be a nine, which is bridging the gap and connecting with all unity. Oh. That's weird. It's on silent. I don't know why it would be ringing. Okay. Okay, so new moons are new beginnings. It's the beginning of a new cycle. Okay, so you get one new moon and one full moon per year. So this is Scorpio's new moon and new beginning. We have just dropped into the underworld now that we're in Scorpio season. Right? Because Libra is the balance between uh, the light and the dark the, right there on the equator. Well, now we're under. So this is a huge transformation time. Okay? Everything is now changing, right? From all this life. And now all the leaves are falling off the tree. Now there's death. Okay? So this is this transformation from the ending of one cycle to the beginning of the next. So take as much healing and awakening out of this new moon, okay? This is a time to take out some time for meditation. And if you don't know how to do it, just sit there and close your eyes. Maybe put on some instrumental sounds, but or if it's raining outside, you could just listen to rain outside. Light a candle and just listen to your thoughts and your emotion and accept them as they come in and as they go out. Okay? Just like waves. Our thoughts are just like waves. Okay? So they'll come in and then if it takes you out of the moment, ask yourself if it's relevant to the moment in your meditation and if it's not, then let it float into the other room until you're done. So if I'm sitting here and I'm meditating, okay, and I start thinking about how I need to go get my tires changed on my car because it's raining or I need to get my windshield wipers replaced, that is irrelevant to my meditation, okay, because those are chores. Those are things that cause stress. That is thinking in the future. And when you think in the future, you become anxious, Okay, this is why a lot of people suffer from anxiety because they're so thinking about the future and worried about the future and where the future is going to go and that they're missing out on the present moment. And the opposite of that would be if you're so regretful and you're always focused on the past, that's where depression comes in. Okay, so being in the moment is the best place to be because it's the only moment that we're promised. Okay, so we're not promised the future. So worrying about it is irrelevant. You can plan for the future for sure. But if something comes your way and you're so set on this one thing, this thing might be better. Okay, so you want to be very mindful. Hi, Lily. 
and very flexible in life. And um, in meditation, when you first start, it might be a little uncomfortable for you. And that's okay, because it is kind of uncomfortable when you first start, because you're sitting with yourself and your thoughts, okay? It's a form of getting to know yourself better. And being able to turn those thoughts um, around into something productive and proactive and positive. Maybe if you've never really did meditation before, just take out 10 minutes. Set, set your alarm on your phone, and then you don't have to look at it, whatever, and you just know that when the alarm goes off, it's been 10 minutes, and you could be done if you like. And each day, increase it. There's an app called Headspace. It's a good guide to help you through your meditation if you're just starting out. So let me get to the chart for the new moon in Scorpio. So Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. And Pluto is in Capricorn right now. Capricorn is a, a earth sign and it is a cardinal sign. So it starts and initiates things. And it gets things moving in the right direction. It is the, the goat that wants to climb to the top of the mountain. So it is transforming our three-dimensional reality, okay? Because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So Saturn will be coming home to Capricorn. It's ruling sign and planet will be together at the end of December, which is going to be pretty rad because Saturn's been in Sagittarius. It's not happy there. Not happy at all there because Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, which is the expansion planet, which is opposite. Saturn and... Uh, Jupiter work together. So one expands and one contracts, just like our heart. So Saturn's been in a sign that's ruled by uh, the expansion planet. And Saturn is the constricting planet. It doesn't want to be there. And Sagittarius doesn't want it there either. So probably a lot of Sagittarius have experienced um, not the greatest luck that they've ever had in their life. Because they're pretty lucky um, uh, signs. So if your sun is in a very lucky, expansive planet, you're very lucky. So the last two and a half years hasn't been that lucky. But good for you guys. It's leaving at the end of December and going home back into Capricorn. So we'll be very happy. Capricorn for Sagittarius is in the second house of money and value. And you're going to be feeling really good because you haven't been feeling the greatest for so long. So that's good. That's something to look forward to. And all of us actually have each sign in different aspects of our life. So that's, that's that on the Pluto aspect. Now, I'm seeing that the moon and the sun, okay, when they're conjunct in the sky, that means they're lined up. That makes a new moon. You can't really see anything. There's no moon. You don't see anything because there's no, there's no reflection of the sun off of it. So you can see it. It is in the second house of value. Okay, so this new moon, when it's exactly conjunct, guess what's rising? Mars in the sign of Libra. Now, Mars doesn't belong in Libra. Mars is ruled by the opposite sign of Aries, but it's in the sign of Libra, which is all about partnership. And Aries is about me, myself, of passion, drive. So we're going to, we're probably going to be very passionate about our relationships with other and our partnerships. Okay, so much to the fact that you might just want to just jump right in and be like, let's just, you know, let's just run away together. Let's, or let's just go get married, you know. Then it's opposed by Uranus and Aries. And Uranus is about future thinking, about self, right? The, the, the Aries wants freedom. Uh, Uranus wants freedom. And I want to do whatever I want. Okay, so you have these two opposing like energies or like, yes, let's, let's get married. Let's run away. Let's go have awesome babies. And the other one's like, let's just take off and do me. And, and then we have Pluto right in the middle at the icy and it is totally transforming and healing these deep issues from the home and from family, okay? So it's like we're finding our value um, 
our self value and we're asking ourselves is there does there need to be any adjustments with what I value about myself and where I've come from to my relationship that I'm having with myself is this what what I really want is just to be alone and also questioning our partnerships that we're in does it reflect the value that I have for myself am I in loving healthy partnerships okay that's one aspect of it as well then you have this Chiron which is it's sextiling so there's just a lot I feel a lot of healing that's around our partnerships and ourself because in relationships we are really having a relationship with ourselves we project our things onto others that we don't like about ourselves and if there's certain things that you don't like in your partner or your friends then that is probably a characteristic that you also have that you don't like about yourself that your ego is just kind of shutting out where you can't see it within yourself but you're seeing it in those around you which are just mere images so once those things are fixed within ourselves, well, then you're going to start finding the people that are in your life start having the better qualities as well, right? So if you, if you work on yourself and you focus on loving yourself and focusing on what kind of person you are and who you could be in relationships and partnerships with others, then you'll start seeing that in the partnerships that uh, are surrounding you. Okay, what else is there? So Mars is squaring Pluto. It's transforming us from the past self to our future self and what we want our future self and our future partnerships to look like and being able to find a balance between self and other. And it seems to be that it's been that a huge theme for the past um, few months, uh, you know, going through... Um, the sun being in Libra, which is partnerships, and now it's dropping into Scorpio, which is another kind of really passionate love and desire for another person. Okay. And Jupiter and um, Venus are in the first house of self, your identity. So we're learning a lot about like who we are now because we have all transformed, and we're still transforming. We have all changed with the seasons. We've changed with this, you know, ascension process that we're going through, the shifting of energies, the shifting of a new era, a new paradigm, a new dimension. Who freaking knows? But we all feel it, and we're all different. And so now with this, this different, this new us, we're trying to figure out, okay, well, how is this going to work now? What are the things that I need to adjust within myself? Be able to give myself what I want for the new future. Leaving the old behind. What kind of person do I want to be? What kind of work do I want to do in the world? What kind of partner do I want? What kind of partner do I want? All these are shifting into a new um and is there anything else that i'm saying in the chart besides deep transformation yeah i mean for the 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 snapshot of the exact conjunction of the moon and the sun the only things that are above the the horizon is mars and uranus and they're in opposition. So, you know, it's getting very clear about what we want in partnerships and who we are in partnerships and how we can balance our own desires with being in a partnership. Uranus, you know, all this so over on the on the south side is just moving away from ego self you know it's like this battle between like well my ego doesn't want to get hurt and so I want to protect myself or I only want you know the hottest 
chick, you know, like, I was gonna say Farrah Fawcett, because I don't watch TV, and, like, that's such an old, like, actress <laughs> that was, like, idolized. Who is it now? Hell, I don't know. Kardashians? I hear people talk about that. But, you know, your ideal, like, um, Baywatch chick or something, that's old too. So I'm going to just stop. <laughs> just stop now <laughs> before, before I dig myself in a deeper hole. Um, but moving away from, like, this ideal partner, okay? Because there's no perfect partner. There's no perfect man. And there's no perfect woman, you know? Everything's always greener on the other side. But like moving away from this illusion, this ide uh, ideologized uh, relationship, there is none. And moving towards like, you know, finding that balance between the masculine and feminine and being able to charge forward and still keep our own identity, even though we're in partnerships. Um, the North Node is up there too. So and that's all about future and uh, children and romance and creativity. And there's just so much to look forward to. There's all these things underneath the horizon that want to be expressed. The transformation, the deep oh, passion, the future, the emotions, the like the fantasy. It all wants to be expressed. And um, we just want, are trying to suppress that ego and that over-dominating, gimme, gimme, now, now mentality and no patience. Uh, things take time. There's a process. Whether that's in friendships, in relationships, in getting what we want. Maybe it's a new job or the new career or maybe it's the move. Or maybe it's like having kids or marriage or it's things that are our goal, let's say, and not being so frustrated because you don't have it right now. You can't force, you know, a square into a circle. You know what I'm saying? It's a process. You have to sand the square down. You have to sand it down before you fit it into the circle. Little kid blocking. Um, that was a weird analogy. I don't know. Mercury's in shadow right now, and Uranus are all going to be a little quirky, a little, a little eccentric. Maybe some of our little quirks are going to come out from when we were kids. <sighs> I think I'm done. I'm done! Can I go play now? Can I go play? Yay! I'm done! Alright guys, I wish you guys the best new beginning in Scorpio, the great transformation of a lifetime. Make sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking that link right below. And I haven't got my nails done in a while. Um, like my videos and share. And if you'd like a personal reading with me, go ahead and give me an email. Doing free consultations. Love to chat with you and see if we could make your life a lucid living life. All right, make it a great week. Just try to ignore The fact that they don't care Why they stop and stay Why